and welcome back. So I've just unpacked this uh, plug-in transformer. It's a nine volt. Yeah, so it's a nine volt one amp um, transformer plug-in adapter, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, I have these for my electronics projects, and uh, this one is totally dead. Um, now the problem is, of course, I've had these for I don't know, two or three years now, just waiting to be used. I bought them, I think I bought five in one go, along with some 12 volts. So, <clears throat> watch the light go out. Alright, so this is a 12 volt one, identical really in all other respects. <clears throat> and that's working absolutely fine. They were bought for um, a CCTV project. But this 9 one, which I just use for sort of general electronics, plugs it in, not a sausage. So I'm thinking, well, is there a wire loose inside? Is this cable in some way damaged? Um, or what? Hmm. I think I'm going to have to uh, investigate further. To be quite honest, normally anything mains like this from the Far East, I'll be very tempted to chuck it in the bin because I don't, I don't really have uh, full confidence in them. Despite the uh, that CE mark, which for Europe means something that it's been certified actually also stands for something like China Enterprise or something anyway. It's the, it's the mark that Chinese people put on their product to make it look as though it's been certified for use in Europe, but it hasn't been. So normally I'd probably chuck it away, but no, on this occasion I think I might just take another step and see what I can possibly do to fix it. Hmm. So I've managed to uh, crack the case open, quite surprisingly actually, I thought it would be welded shut more than it is. It, it was fairly difficult to get open but I've managed it. Uh, before I did that though, I did cut the cable about, I don't know, 50 centimetres along, just to see if it was the socket at the other end, but this is this was still dead. So I thought, well, in that case I'm, I've got no choice. So I've, I've cracked the case open. And we've ended up with this um, circuit board inside. Now, as I say, the, the mains that you can see soldered on the back there goes straight into the board. And I don't think there's an isolating transformer that end. I'm hoping that is one here in the middle. But even then, it's probably just some sort of switched power supply. And frankly, it gives me the, the heebie-jeebies, really. Anything mains like that. Especially when I see uh, rectifiers and the such like like those four under there, you see that under the capacitor, there are four rectifiers on what looks like to be the main side of the board, and that is definitely a, a lethal shock waiting to happen. So I'm going to be very, very careful with this and just measure a couple of voltages along the way to see if I can determine where the problem lies. I'm hoping it's something really simple, like a soldering joint that's been missed, or something like that. So, well, we'll see, but as I say, I'm going to have the utmost respect for this because I just don't like these Chinese mains products at all. Right, hopefully I'll be back to give you an update. Hmm, there's a morbid thought. Right, the first thing I've got to do, and if I'm going to plug this in at all, of course, is replace these little tiny wires here that go to the live and neutral on these boards. I've got to desolder these so I can solder a bigger cable on. Now, when I have appliances that fail, in my house, um, whether it's you know a lamp or a kettle or something, I always keep the cable that comes with it. So I cut it off near the base, and uh, I'm going to use one of those. Here's one I found in my box. So as you can see, this is a, a nice long cable, and uh, I've just stripped off a little bit of the insulation on the wires. Then I'm, I'm going to solder those directly on there. Not that I think that's going to make any difference, but at least it lets me then look at this board when it's put into a clamp or a vice or something to stop it moving about like this, because that's one sure way of getting a shock. Right, let's do that and see what we find. Um, and I've been checking the voltages under the board, um, and I couldn't really get a decent reading anywhere. I've, specifically, I checked the voltages on that chip you see there, um, which is upside down from our point of view, but... I thought, well, if there's power to the chip, then at least perhaps we can measure what's coming out the chip. But then looking at it a bit more, I thought, I don't know, this coil here looks at a slightly wonky handle, angle, that is. And I'm hoping I can get in there, because this this thing here is all a bit, it's all a bit loose, look. And in fact, 
looking at it even closer, I'm not convinced that far connection is actually connecting at all on that coil. It's like it's been hit from this end and it's snapped at least one of those wires. Let me just get a, um, a pencil and show you what I mean. So if we can get into there, there we are. So this is the coil where the power comes into and this wire here, I don't want to touch it in case there's any sort of residual build up anywhere that I'm not aware of. Right, I'm going to clamp this in properly and show you. Right, here we are back again, this time with the, the thing actually clamped in place. And this coil or transformer or whatever it is, um, this wire here doesn't seem to be connected. As I say, I want to be very careful with it in case there's a possibility of reattack. Yes, look, I mean, that is moving about all over the place. The camera I'm using at the moment isn't my normal camera, so this is a bit more difficult to zoom in on. But let's, let's see if I can actually... Um... Well, certainly you can see that this is all a bit wobbly and probably broken on the actual chassis side. And that wire there seems to be not connected either anymore or was never connected in the first place. So I'm going to have a look into that a little bit more and uh, see if there's some remedial work I can do or whether it's totally foobar. Right, back in a sec. Right then, it turns out that this little component here was a bit more extensively damaged than I thought because as soon as I straightened it up the whole thing just sort of fell apart. There was at least three connections that had been ripped off. Now I've sort of done a makeshift repair on those using some strands of uh, copper wire from a mains cable. I've just pulled a few out, um, roughly to the best of my um, estimation, about the same thickness as the copper wire on here in the first place. Now it's just sort of hanging in there, so I'm going to try it, and if, if that's the answer then I'm going to get some epoxy putty or something and uh, make sure this never moves again, because at the moment it's all a bit fragile. Okay, let's have a look at the... Um, meter when I get it connected up. Right, so I've connected my meter up and well it would have been nice to tell you that that repair was in fact uh, the success I was hoping it was going to be because what we were expecting on our meter at this time, my digital voltmeter that is, is 9 volts. But as you can see on the video, oh good lord look it says 9 volts, success! Okay, I'm playing about with you a little bit. That was obviously the problem, it was physical damage then to the board but quite frankly, that must have been done before the board was even put inside the transformer case. So that's a, that's an indication of sort of the quality control you can sometimes find in these Far Eastern products. But um, there we are. It's fixed at the moment, although as I say, a little bit precarious because it's only being held on now by four strands. So I'm going to put some epoxy putty or something around that to hold it all into place. Then put it back into its case and of course... I've cut off this cable now, so I've got to join this back up, but that's no hardship. A bit of um, shrink tubing on each of those wires and one over the whole thing. And I'll show you what it looks like um, when I've got the putty on first, though, to see how this component stands up. At the moment, I don't really want to touch it too much, because we are talking about mains voltage going on here. But I'll touch it with a plastic pen. As you can see, look, I mean, it's wobbling all over the place, because there's nothing, nothing holding it on apart from... A little bit of soldering I've done. Okay, let's get that plastic putty on there, or epoxy, or whatever it is I can find in my cupboard, and uh, see how we go from there. Well, I'm a bit spoilt for choice, really, because I've still got a tiny bit of aerodite left, this here, which I'm very tempted just to use up. I've also got a brand new epoxy putty kit, and of course I've got Thermomorph. Now, I've used this a little bit in the past, and if you can just make out there, those are little tiny beads of plastic and you put them into hot water above 60 degrees and they become sort of transparent and just go into a sort of loop um, that you can then take out and mould into whatever shape you want. And I've used those and they're really good. And after it's set, as long as you don't get it above 60 again, of course, it's solid, hard plastic. And um, you can then cut it and file it and drill it and all sorts of things. But I think that might be a little bit overkill for what I want. So maybe just this tiny little bit of uh, epoxy putty. I'll see if it's still... Is viable. I've had it a while. Um, it feels okay though. A bit sticky. I'll try this, see how it goes. Right, here's that uh, epoxy putty now rolled into a ball. It's gotten quite hot actually, so I suspect the chemical reaction has already started. So I'm going to get on 
and somehow mould it very very gently around there. If that doesn't work I'm back to the uh, the polymorph I think. Right, let's try it. Right, there it is. I've sort of moulded it round it. I mean it's only got to hold it in position. I just hope I haven't made it too big now to fit inside the case, but I didn't really have time to faff about. Should have checked first. Um, well there we are, so let's hope that holds it into place and I'll put that all back together and uh, hopefully that'll be the end of that. So as I was uh, mildly concerned that perhaps the epoxy putty I put around it would actually prevent me putting it back into the case, I put it back into the case while it was still setting so there was no chance it wasn't going to fit and then I've just glued with some standard household glue, we call it yoo in the in the UK but who knows what it is in your part of the world. So I've just glued the case together which means of course I might have got it apart once, but I'll never get it apart again. So I'm just hoping this will work still when um, the glue's dried. So I'm going to leave it like that now for 24 hours, clamped up in this vice. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to plug it back in again. I'm going to solder this cable here, though, in anticipation, eager anticipation, that in fact it's all going to work. So I'm going to repair this, leave this as it is for 24 hours, and then tomorrow just double check this all working and then I've rescued a 9 volt power supply. Wow, let's see. Now I thought it might be um, useful to those people who haven't actually used shrink tubing before. That's what you can see inside this packet here, all different colours. And this one which is red and black. In fact, mainly red now. Probably because I keep using black, I don't know. Anyway, you can get it all different diameters. Um, and as you can see, if you look through the ends of these tubes, you can see that I've got mostly larger ones or extremely tiny ones left because the intermediate size ones keep going. So what I've done is um, strip these back, soldered this. Um, let me just get my hand behind there so the camera focuses there. Are. So I've soldered the um, red and black separately with a piece of heat shrink tubing on each ready to be shrunk down. And then, because we want physical strength here, there's a larger piece of heat shrink going to come down here over the entire um, soldered joint really. So there's the joint soldered up. I'm going to put the heat shrink on it. Oh yes, now what do I use for the heat shrink uh, to shrink it down? It's one of these. It's one of these butane powered torches. Um, it's a little bit fiddly doing all this because I've only got one hand to film with. So this is um, a butane powered torch which you fill up at the bottom with standard butane lighter fuel and uh, set this off. You push this in and push this down then you get a nice really hot blast of air, not flame, air coming out of this bit here, heated air obviously. Um, and you just direct that then at this here um, and it shrinks it down. I'll try and film that and we'll see what success I have. Right, the uh, heat shrink tubing is on. Of course the camera will insist on trying to focus on the desk behind but I think you might get the idea. So if I put this in front of it. Right, so what I'm going to do is just wave this in front of it. Quite close though, it's surprising how much uh, heat you need. And I just wander up and down without trying to burn it. And eventually it sort of kicks in. So that's all I do. So let's see if I can both film and do this at the same time without the thing bursting into flames. There it goes, it's starting to shrink. Now you've got to do it from all sides obviously because it shrinks equidistantly. So up, down, Wherever. But when it's done, it's done. I mean, that's never going to move. That's going to provide decent protection. Right, now for the bigger bit. So this this one now is the uh, the large piece that um, I mentioned. It's going to go over the entire joint. The joint's sort of somewhere in the middle of this cable now. So I'm just going to run up and down here with my little torch. And you can see it's sort of slowly shrinking. Or well, at least I hope you can. I can't really watch the camera while I'm doing this or we're going to do some damage. So there we are, equidistance all the way along without letting it burn underneath. In fact, you might be able to just catch the glow of the um, flame underneath. I say flame, it actually heats up a little tiny grid inside. Right, I think that gives you the idea. I'm going to stop filming so I can just finish this off 100%. But you can actually see, I'm hoping it'll pick it up here, the shape of the repair inside looks. It is doing it. Okay, right, that's going to be about it, and tomorrow we'll come back and see if that glue is set. And here we are 24 hours later, so I think it's about time we unclamped this <coughs> and have the um, whoops, dreaded moment of truth. See if this uh, works still. 
after all we did test it uh, before putting the case back on didn't we so that's on the uh, cable is mended in fact I'm just trying to look for the join there it is there you see that little bit of lettuce that's not too bad is it really okay now we need to um, connect up the meter now this is probably going to be easier done if I switch it on first okay so that's got a picture of my meter I'm hoping it's very difficult to see it from this angle right and on oh brilliant I hope you can see that let me move it a bit closer 9.1 volts now this is a stabilized supply so I'd expect it to pretty, be pretty much constant great well that's it then saved that's uh, the 9 volt supply all up and running good save myself a couple of quid and nothing else just one point um, if you notice above where it's plugged in see that little thing there that's an earth leakage circuit breaker so if I had touched anything I would severely thought that um, that should have kicked in and saved me from a, a premature demise and I certainly don't recommend playing about with mains voltages whatever unless you're in some way qualified or experienced that's just my take on the matter okay all right okay thanks for watching I hope you're finding these videos interesting and useful you can leave comments down below and also click that little button that says subscribe okay thanks for watching and see you in the next video